Good morning, bird lovers. This is Tatiana Thompson, and it's episode 15 of Brown Bird News. Today is January 26th. January is almost over. Have you noticed the days are getting longer? Spring is just around the corner. It's getting colder outside and more people are buying bird feeders and then wondering what to put in them. You can always go to your local nature show because they're really good at giving advice on what works or what doesn't work in your particular area. Here's what works in my backyard. I buy a lot of black sunflower seeds. Uh, I also buy safflower seeds and I have a peanut feeder, shelled peanuts. So I buy a lot of those. I actually need to fill this up. It's very popular in these cold temperatures. There we go. However, if you don't like the mess that safflower seeds or sunflower seeds leave on the ground, you can also look for mixes that uh, have shelled things like uh, shelled sunflower seeds or shelled peanuts. They're slightly smaller so you can put them in regular uh, feeders. Another thing that I recommend when you buy a new feeder is that don't fill it up all the way. Try a little bit of this and a little bit of that to see what works in your backyard. Let me show you the kind of pictures we received this week. Would you have picked? It was really hard for us, but we decided to send this Squirrel Buster Classic, another squirrel proof feeder from Brome, to Florida to Chuck Steele. Have a look at this picture kissing owls. And you know, he saw those just at the end of his driveway in Florida. Lucky him. Chuck, enjoy your classic feeder. This week's question for Dr. Bird is from Marcia. I have a bluebird house and this was the second year they came back. I cleaned out the old nest thinking it would help them. But would it be better for the bluebirds if I left the old nest and didn't clean anything? This is an interesting and controversial question. There's no doubt that used nests contain various kinds of parasites like lice, mites and even blowflies that can be harmful to the nesting parents and their babies. While most experts will advise you to definitely clean out the nest annually a few weeks after the babies have left, say it's September, not all agree. First, some claim that leaving the old nest there allows the old parasites to eat the new parasites in the next nesting season, which could conceivably be good for the birds. Second, others suggest that leaving the nest in the box for next season suggests that it's a safe, successful nesting site. Third, others claim that leaving the nest in can lead the birds to building a new nest on top of the old one and thereby making it easier for predators to reach in and grab eggs and babies. As for making it easier for the birds though, do not worry about that. Part of the ritual of courtship is building a nest. After removing the nest, rinse the interior out with a diluted bleach spray and make sure it drains and dries. After that, give your hands a good thorough wash with hot water and soap. Thank you, David. We'll see you next week. Send your questions to askdrbird at brownbirdcare.com. I always thought that a mother's song was much more soothing than the father's, but apparently with zebra finches, it is daddy's song that triggers something in the youngsters' brains, and that's how they start to learn really complex songs. Another fascinating thing that scientists are discovering is how the birds store all that information in their heads. It's all tremendously complicated, but here's the easiest way to understand this process. So a daddy sings a song, 
a compartment in the chick's brain opens. It fills it with a section of the song. It learns that section, and then the compartment closes, and a door to another empty compartment opens, and so on and so forth. We don't know how many of those compartments birds have in their heads, but what we do know is that once they've memorized the whole song, they never forget it. That's just so incredible. In episode six, I talked about plans to move Montana sage grouse to Alberta, Canada. Well, we've just heard that immigration papers have all been approved, and over the next five years, 120 birds will be relocated to Alberta, Canada. I hope they'll all settle in with no complications. These birds are known to be so fussy about their lodgings. Whenever I see an article about a young birder, I just have to share it. You know, having taught teenagers, I know how challenging it can be to get them interested in anything. And I found it really shocking to learn that more and more teenagers are getting seriously involved in birding. Today on Around the World, we head to Chennai, India, which hosts an annual bird race. And what's very interesting about this particular race is that it's becoming extremely popular with younger people. According to the organizers of the event, last year 50% of the participants were in their teens or early 20s. And one of the regulars on the circuit is a 16-year-old named Vikas Madhav, who can identify 1,000 bird species and has photographed 600 himself. There is hope after all. If you know or live with a teenager who is really into birds, the feather variety, then I encourage you to sign him or her up for Cornell's annual Young Birders event, which will take place between July 7th and 10th, 2016 in Ithaca, New York. Only 16 teenagers will be admitted. The deadline for application is March 15th. More details in the link. Goodbye for now, have a great week and keep your feeders filled!